we're back in the fish room while we wait for that seven foot to dry out. And um, what I want to do is, I do very large water changes on these tanks uh, every week. These tanks generally get 50% water changes once or twice a week. Um, and that is mainly because they're, well, they're overstocked, they're shop tanks. Um, they're overstocked, over filtered, and probably a little bit over water changed. Um, but that is essentially what I have to do to keep the water pristine in here. Now, if you go into a shop like, say, uh, Maidenhead Aquatics or Pets at Home, all of the tanks are on one system. So um, these actually used to be uh, Maidenhead Aquatics tanks, and you can see where the weirs used to be stuck into these, um, which is like those glass panels. So there would have been an overflow weir, and then um, the tanks were actually drilled in the back. So in most conventional fish shops, um, all of the tanks, uh, say, in a, in a wall, respectively, would be on one system. It falls down through the overflow, down into a sump, which would be down at the bottom where Agatha is. Um, that would be your sump. And then generally to do water changes, you would do a water change from the sump. However, when I designed this fish room, I went uh, for a slightly different tactic um, because essentially what I wanted to do was make sure all of the tanks were separate. Um, and that's for biosecurity um, and also just generally for medications and things. It's, it's just a lot easier having things separate. So all of the nets get disinfected in between uses and the hoses all get like rinsed out and dried out. Um, and I'm very, very careful about biosecurity. However, when you've got 35, 36 tanks, it can be a bit of a job doing a 50% water change on all of them. Uh, it takes a little bit of a while. And in the old fish room, I'd taken advantage of this drilled tank business. And I actually had valves underneath the tanks that I could open out and then it would all drain outside. And then all I had to do was come back in with my hose and fill them all up. And I decided not to do it in here to start with just because um, it was a little bit fiddly to set up and also the bulkheads and things in the PVC was very, very expensive. Um, so what I've decided to do instead is create some sort of pose related system. So I did start playing with a little bit of a prototype. Um, the idea is that every tank will have something like this in it. Um, so that's like a U and then that would ideally be set up 50%. So even if I left it, um, it's not going to drain the tank out any lower than the filter. Um, and the idea would be that they were all on one row. Um, I didn't have enough bits to connect this one up, but that would be like the same and going into that tank and then another one for this tank. So I'd flick a, a valve and the water would start draining out. Um, and I could then attach a hose to the end of it and drain it outside into the flower beds. Um, so something like this, I reckon, would potentially work. There are a couple of limitations. The tanks are probably not going to drain at the same speed. Um, and obviously for biosecurity, this is only going to be for draining, not for filling. Because if I then reverse the flow and pumped all of this water back up into the tanks, I can't guarantee that that water is going to go exactly into the hoses that it was already in and obviously it's going through a shared hose at the bottom so as a drainage system i think this will work it's not too difficult to just go around and fill everything back up with hoses but draining the tanks out um can be a bit of a pain just starting and stopping the siphon 36 times it's just yeah so i have got some bits they've arrived um and i'm gonna just have a bit of a play and see what i can come up with so um this is my diagrams so you can sort of understand what I what I'm on about so it would drain out of each tank and then I would attach my hose uh, when I'm doing the water changes um, flick a valve and it would drain outside and then that would be for the rack of six and that would be for the rack of breeding tanks um, so I'm just going to start with this system on the end for today and just see if the theory works it should um, and it would be really really nice if I can just really um, it just it just makes life a little bit easier and it means I've got time to focus on other things around the fish room instead of standing here with my arm in a tank, holding a hose in, um, siphoning it. So, let's get cracking.
All right. So, uh, I did try and do it in the green, but the green for some reason is a little bit um, smaller. Um, so I don't really know what was going on with that, but I'll tape over it um, so it's not as like obvious, especially down at the bottom, um, but I'll be able to hide it. So hopefully you can see what I've done. So it's basically like your normal siphons that would be uh, in the tank, except they're all attached. Now, so I've got a valve for the top one, and then I've also got a valve on the row for the bottom one. The reason for that is um, there is a bit of a risk because these tanks are lower that when I, if I did it all as one, that the water would just fill the bottom tanks. Um, but I think the hose is long enough that the gravity would pull it all out. So we'll, we'll see if I can do it with both of them open at once. Um, logically speaking, I think the top tanks would drain fast. Um, so just running it on like a separate thing. So if that valve is closed, excuse my corner of rubbish, it's got a corner of rubbish. Um, if that valve is closed and that valve is open, then the only way the water can go is out of this one. And then likewise, if that valve is closed and that one is open, then the only way the water can go is out of that one. So they attach down there, and then there's a little connector there at the bottom, uh, which is where I'm going to attach the hose. And um, yeah, all of this is then going to get taped up um, because the weight of the water could potentially hoik all of this out of tanks. But I think it might work. Now, for this tank here, this one has quarries in it, um, like little baby quarries. So what I've just done is I've um, popped uh, like a strainer on there, which is probably what you saw me struggling with. Um, but no, pleased with that. And uh, yeah, basically now it's just time to see if it works. Right, so I'm gonna go and see if I can get the siphon going. Um, and then we will have a look. So let me open up this side. I can get that going first. Right, so I'm imagining that the siphon will stop when the first tank reaches the end. So I'm assuming that that tank on that side there is going to be the one that finishes first. It's interesting. Why isn't this one going? Interesting, I don't think this one's raining. Hmm, I wonder what I have to do to get that one going. But the other two are going. That one's going and that one's going. It's just that's a bigger tank, so you're not really seeing the amount of water that's coming out of it. What happens if I open the other valve? I don't think it goes that way. Is the pressure from the water going to pull those ones out as well? Are they going to start draining as well? Or are we going to... Is it all going to be a little bit different? Interesting. Not entirely sure where that middle one isn't working. Um, so I think what I'll have to do is just like pump some water into it. Uh, I imagine there's just like a little bit of air in there. Um, however, so that, that tank on the end there is draining out, that's fine. Okay, so the system works on these ones. Obviously this is a four foot tank, so it's only going to take out like an inch or so. I think what I may do is pop a valve on each tank, um, so that I can switch, say that one off. That one's the closest, so I imagine that's why. I can switch that one off, and then these two can carry on draining, because once this has reached the end of this hose, that's going to stop. So, let me turn this side, this top row off. And then I wonder if the force of the water going down is going to be enough to start the siphon going on these ones. Or it may even be that what I have to do is do it like a double-ended thing so that the pressure is even. So I might need to pop a T-piece on oh, camera. I might need to pop a T-piece on the end there and like connect them like a ladder so that when I suck on the hose, the pressure is even instead of um, just coming out of certain tanks. Um, however, I'm not convinced the siphon is going on these second rows. I don't know, is it what going down? I don't think so. Let's go and check. So 
we go, just need to uh, give the end a bit of a flick because the, uh, the hose is so long that the weight of the water inside of it is enough to get the siphon going because it's obviously a lot longer than these, these bits on the end. Um, so the weight of the water um, will like restart it basically. However, it looks like we're having the same thing. That end tank is draining faster. Hmm, not even convinced those other tanks are going. Interesting. I think it's where the siphon hasn't started on those ones. So I need to get some water up into those. And then once I've done that, this should all be working just fine. So, I've got an idea. What I've just done is I've attached uh, another hose to the end of that hose. So what I'm going to do is actually pump water into the tanks, um, which should hopefully um, make it so that these all bubble up properly. Right, so I've done it right, all of these should bubble. Just a bit of air out of them. Okay, so There we go. Can you see how they just purged? There we go. And one's just gone as well. Okay, cool. So if that's done those ones, then that's now a complete siphon. And then if I do this one, you should see then the air pop out of these other ones. Okay. Yeah, right, those. Alright, purge. We need to put the flow up a little bit. So let's see now. So I've just uh, disconnected it again. Are those other tanks going to go down now? Are they going down? Yeah, I can see water getting sucked off into that. And that one as well. Excellent. So, as long as the, um, the siphon stays complete, this should now be like primed and ready to go. So, it's a closed system. So, once that valve is closed, the water is going to be still in here. Um, and there'll be obviously a little bit of air in this tube because the water will sit in here. Um, so it won't have direct access to tanks. Yeah, that's how you're going in there. Um, so the next time I turn this on, we should all then fill up and drain out evenly. Yeah, the water lines are going to be going down on those. Yeah, you can see where that one was there. Okay, excellent. So that one's working. And then is this bottom one working? Yep, yeah, that one's going. Easiest way to tell, no, what's included. Oh, yeah, it's going. You can see a little leaf going up. Okay, so that one's going just a little bit slower. Oh, actually, I think I have to stop it if I get into shape. So I can see that the water is now draining out. Excellent. It's very picky. This is how I have to feed the R1 of these days um, because he is so jumpy. <laughs> he still makes me jump even though I don't know he does it. But he will literally jump up and bite my hand. So what I have to do is push these are little um, black soldier fly larvae thingies. Um, But yeah, this is basically what I have to do. I have to push them in because um, otherwise what, what happened was he literally like jumped up and latched onto my hand, um, which was not fun. Um, 
it's not painful it's just a bit of a shock and it doesn't matter how many times you get bit it's just still like there's nothing i can do to stop my body reacting to it like i can pick up a big old spider and not be like too freaked out but <laughs> i don't know what it is i guess it's just human nature the oscars i'm a little bit better with um but the snakehead and the giardini even though like i like to put it through fish it's just a bit of a shock there we go it's not that one so yeah that's what i have to do to avoid getting bitten by this guy and there is so much stuff on top of this so he's obviously got his like bouncy lid thing that as you saw gave him a little bit of bounce so he didn't like hit his head um but then there's literally like polycarb stones there's just stuff everywhere um and then yeah we end up with mealyworms everywhere not mealyworms um black soldier fly larvae everywhere um so yeah, just something to bear in mind if you want a Jardini Arowana. Once he's had a couple, he's all right. But um, he is a monster now. He is a big fish. Um, it's probably about two foot now. 18 inches, two foot. He's he's a big, big fish. It's difficult to get a sense of scale because he's about two foot back. This is obviously a three foot wide tank. But he is a beautiful, very, very strong fish. Um, it's just a pain this tank, the reflections are awful because of where it is in the fish room. In person, all of these red markings on him and like his tail is this most beautiful red and blue. He really is a phenomenal animal. I'm, I'm still really pleased I got him. I know arowanas aren't really for everyone and they are a liability. Um, but yeah, you can see what an absolute unit this, uh, this fish is turning into now. And yeah, it, it, it is a bit of a whack. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a male just because of the coloration on him. Um, but I guess I guess we'll never know. But yeah, beautiful big fish. Alrighty then, I will finish it there for today with Bug. You know that one? There you go. Good lad. Still need to get some sand in here. It is a plan, but I'm actually going to wait off and do it um, once we've put the sun foot over the top of this. So um, that's going to hopefully happen in about a week's time. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for the next one. We've had a very productive uh, couple of days here. And uh, I will see you next time.